So welcome to the third installment of Film Bully Base. I'm here with my frequent collaborator, Logan Albright. Which direction are you going to be? Let's assume that's, up. That's right. <laughs> up that way. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> so we both like this film. We just are, we're here to talk about the favorite. And we're here uh, to discuss a film that we both really like. So I saw this film first, and I immediately knew that you were going to like it. But I think that you had interest in this film before I did. Yeah, I saw the trailer, and I thought it looked really different and really interesting. And I wanted to see it, and then you recommended it. And I was like, well, if Allison likes it, it must be good. So I'll go take That's a look. That's not always true, because I have a particular taste. But um, I was really into this because of the director. I have seen... Um, Yorgos Lanthimos' films, pretty much all of the ones that have been released starting for about 10 years ago, Dogtooth, which is a deeply unsettling film. And then I saw The Lobster, same, Killing of a Sacred Deer. Uh, that will definitely kick you into perpetual state of ennui. But when I, when I heard that he was doing a period drama, I was all in. I think the trailer uh, marketed this as a comedy, and it is funny in parts, but it really isn't a comedy, I would say. It's more of a drama, but it definitely has funny moments. It does. It's also a big stakes game. There's a lot of emotions circulating. There's a lot of scheming. There's a lot of machinations happening. And uh, some of the actors are great. Like, I didn't even recognize Nicholas Holt as the scheming duke that wanted Emma Stone's character to um, scheme with him. I didn't even recognize him until I saw the credits. What did you think of Olivia Coleman? Loved her. Now, she is going to be in the next season of The Queen. They're going to fast forward, and Olivia Coleman is going to play is going to play the new Queen Elizabeth II. But she's known really well in Britain for doing a host of things. She had to put on weight for the role. Um, she's a very lovely individual, and she had to kind of infantilize herself. Yeah, I know her really well from British comedy. I know her from the Mitchell yeah. and Webb Look Show. I know her from Peep Show. Um, things like that, like really silly comedy stuff. And so it was interesting to see her in a more serious uh, gravitas requiring role. Yeah, that's that's exactly the word. And do you think that Emma Stone, do you think that she was, you know, up for something that she could really sink her teeth into? Do you think that she fulfilled that? I like Emma Stone and I liked her a lot in Birdman, which is one of my favorite films of the last few years. And so I enjoyed her in this as well. I thought she did a good job. Yeah, I, I thought that Rachel Weisz especially was just did a particularly uh, delicious portrayal. Oh, she of was great. The favorite. So the favorite. We've talked a little bit about the favorite and what it means. Now, um, I had told you earlier that I thought the favorite with a U is not just the British spelling, but it can mean like the royal consort of uh, a king or queen. But we've not been able to verify that. Right. But it's whoever in the court just has the favor of the queen or king. And so who is the, let's talk about the title. Who is the favorite? Well, it kind of changes throughout the course of the movie. It's sort of a battle to remain or become the favorite between Rachel Weisz and uh, Emma Stone. Do you think the ending is devastating? Oh yeah. The ending's great. Um, it's a very ambiguous ending. It kind of just leaves you hanging and you, you can interpret it any way you want. Of course, it's based on real history, so there's not that much room for interpretation, but I kind of liked where it ended and you just are left thinking, well, what's going to happen next? Right. Um, I like the metaphors of the different animals. So the birds is definitely one of them. They're out shooting birds all the time, and that's used to kind of intimidate one another. Uh, there's a scene, which you see in the trailer, where Rachel Weisz shoots a, a gun seemingly at Emma Stone. Uh, Emma Stone becomes pretty good at shooting. And then, of course, the rabbits, which serve as a cipher for all of the children that the queen has lost. Yeah. Um, as regular viewers of this channel will know, I'm a massive Stanley Kubrick fan, and I think that Barry Lyndon is his most underrated film, and I immediately drew parallels of this film with Barry Lyndon. It's sort of about uh, the rise from commonhood to uh, nobility. It's about scheming and undermining your opponents to try to get on top. It's the same time period. There's a lot of gorgeous candlelit scenes that reminded me a lot of that film, so I really did feel like it was, uh, it was a Barry Lyndon parallel, which is great for me, from my point of view because I love that film. I was waiting for you to shoehorn in a Barry Lyndon reference. It's not shoehorning. It, there was that <laughs> parallel there. It's real. Uh, I like that you said regular viewers of this channel for like three three episodes in. So, you know, maybe somebody you know, will be watching episode 54 and we'll be catching up and, and not really even notice that. 
Who would you recommend this film to? I'd recommend this film to fans of dark comedies, fans of period pieces, and fans of experimental cinema. Very good. It, it does have an art house qu- quality to it, but not in a way that it just that subgenre puts you off. I don't think that this film will put you off. I saw it on a random, I think, Tuesday to a packed house. Uh, interestingly, I saw it in Georgia, and uh, most of the, a couple people in the theater left when the lesbian scenes first started showing up. I think they had a different expectation of what it was going to be, and it was not at all a packed house. Oh right, because they're they're quite tame. They're not they're not graphic. It's yeah. it's more illusion of, of what's going on. So if you're squeamish about, um, you know, a, adult things like that, it's 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 not. But speaking terrible. of artiness, I love some of the cinematography, and I particularly like the use of a fisheye lens, which you don't usually think of in a period setting, but it really gave the palace sort of this not only grandiose but also sort of a surreal feel, which was great. Well, a lot of reviewers have remarked on the fisheye lens, saying that. It's on the nose, and I get that, but I really enjoyed that. I, I, I did. I don't know how a fisheye lens can be on the nose. What do you mean by that? Well, well, everybody that's in the court, including the queen, are in a fishbowl being looked at by everyone else. Everyone's looking at everyone. They're bored. They're throwing pomegranates at a naked man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought it was oranges, so I had to look that up. Oh, I thought they were tomatoes. Oh, see? Um, so, so apparently they're pomegranates, and everybody's watching everyone. It's very voyeuristic. There's nothing else to do. I mean, you're throwing mm. produce at somebody. So that's why I say it's on the nose, because it's very obvious that they're being watched like ants in an ant farm. farm. I almost said aquarium. <laughs> an antiquarium. I like it. The relationship between Rachel Weisz and Olivia Coleman, it's a very codependent relationship. One needs the other. And sometimes Rachel Weisz can be quite cruel and infantilizing to the queen. But the queen also has kind of these, these hissy fits and kind of needs a firm hand. Uh, do you think... Do you agree? What is your opinion on that report? Well, yeah, and I think Rachel Weisz said it at the end of the movie. She said, you know, I'm the one who's going to tell you the truth. I'm the one who's going to tell you when you look like, look like a badger. I'm not just going to suck up to you because you're the queen, and that's what being a real friend is about. Okay, so if you're the queen, who do you want as your friend? Do you want Rachel Weisz, or do you want it to be Emma Stone? Oh, for me, I it would be Rachel Weisz all the way. I found Emma Stone... I mean, I kind of get that, like, in the 18th century, the only way you could not be in miserable poverty was to be scheming and manipulative and horrible. Um, There was no social mobility. But at the same time, I can't stand those kind of people. And so watching it on film, I'm like, I hated Emma Stone for the whole movie, and I was rooting for Rachel Weisz for sure. Who do you think the the villain is in this film, or villains? I don't know if I'd say that there's a villain, but I do think, from my point of view, I found the scheming uh, usurper of... Emma Stone's character much more unlikable than Rachel Weisz's character. And, and by the way, I think I would prefer to have Rachel Weisz as well. Uh, I'm always smearing my makeup, so that badger comment uh, cut a little too close to hell. Um, so I was really pulling for Emma Stone from the beginning because she starts as somebody that's really gone from riches to rags. She gets pushed out into the mud. She shows up and her cousin says maybe you could be a monster to scare the children i'm I'm not spoiling anything you see that in the trailer and she has to sleep with all of the other people in a tiny tiny room probably you know outside not connected to the castle and she just worked her way up through scheming but i liked the zeal Uh, i liked the perseverance but then at the end where it really turned it for me, it wasn't – it was it was how she was treating the bunnies. That's a true sign of character is how you treat defenseless animals. Now, if you're one of those people that's like, I can't stand animal violence and it's enough to put you off, it's it's nothing um, – no, no bunnies die or anything no like that. No bunnies were harmed in the making of this film. True. I, I, I mean, and, and not even in the, the fictional – film there's no maiming or anything like that but it's it's unsettling if you're an animal lover and i think that's where in emma's the emma's character kind of really shows well that wraps up for our third edition of film bully Bays. thanks for keeping it real with me again tonight logan thank you for having me it's always a pleasure
All right. Well, we'll see you next time when we review TBD. I love that movie, TBD. <laughs> TBD, the sequel. <sighs> Electric. Decision making. <laughs> You're going to cut all this out, right? Of course. Okay. <laughs>